Welcome back to another episode of Pedalbox where we're working on the model railway and last time we went through all of the stock. If you haven't seen that already, do check out the link above. That's where we went through all of my coaches, wagons and locomotives that I brought from my old railway after thinning down the stock quite dramatically. So this time we're primarily looking at track. We're going to have a look at the track plan that I made out for this in any rail and then print that out and get it transferred over onto this board. But before we go too far into that, I'm also going to take another quick look at the difference between Code 100 and Code 75 track. So Code 100 is what you get in every Hornby kit. It's what Pico call their set track. Um, and basically, it's just a little bit taller. Went through last time saying it's about a hundred thousandths of an inch tall compared to the Code 75, which is 75 thousandths of an inch tall. And it's not much different, but it's basically a different look to the railway. The Code 100 is about 30% over scale to the size of a rail when you compare it to a locomotive. Now, I've got another piece over here on the very close-up camera. This is two pieces of code 100 track next to one another. And as you can see, they fit reasonably well. But this is actually a joiner piece. This is an SL113 set from Pico, which you get in a little box. It comes in a pack of four. And this goes from code 100 on one side to code 75 on the other. So I'll just put the code 100 side again and then spin this around and put the code 75 side up against the code 100 track so you can see the difference a little more clearly. And obviously that's not a very big difference in the size of the track so you might say well why is it and it is simply because the code 100 is slightly oversized as I say it's about 30 percent bigger and if I grab a couple of trains you can see the difference a little bit more clearly. So on the left of the camera we've got a piece of code 100 track and on the right of camera we've got a piece of code 75 track with these two paces just sat on top. And if we zoom out a little bit, you can get a slightly better appreciation of the difference in the scale of the Code 75 and the Code 100 with a train in place. So let's take a look at the plan in any rail, what I'm going to be building, get it printed out, and then start transferring it onto this sheet of wood. So here we are in any rail. This is our baseboard, one meter wide by 2.4 meters long. And as you can see, we've got a lot of yellow track, which represents all of the track going down into the depot as it stands right now. Now it's all kind of sunken down to the bottom of this board and that's because this area at the top is actually going to be filled in later on if and when this gets integrated into a much bigger layout. You can see if I just put this layer on, this is si track sidings uh, that come alongside the uh, TMD uh, but aren't part of the main depot itself. Now these obviously extend across the board and access to them is extremely difficult whilst it's on the board, although these two might get included at least to the first length of track, but they don't need to be done right now. Now this does have a slight change to the original plan. This siding at the bottom originally went all the way down the same length as these two at the bottom right of the board as you see it now, and that was to try and incorporate a loop within the bounds of this board, but all of these corners are first radius. Uh, and they would have been very, very tight, and I wouldn't have been able to finish the um, scenery down this end. So I've turned the board on its side, and we've just zoomed in on the main track plan section, and you can see this is the main road that comes in from either the rest of the layout. So it splits into three. The top route splits again and goes into two different areas. One is the maintenance shed, which will sit across the top of these two tracks with a little head shunt at the back, and the bottom half comes down into two storage sidings. One is probably going to get extended all the way through to the back end of this concreted area. This light grey represents the, the concrete hard standing. Now the middle road comes down and splits again into two. At the top it splits and splits again and goes into these two inspection um, pits, which are inside this smaller building. So underneath there you've got two inspection pits that you can park locos over. And then below them, again off the mid axis from the middle row, this is where I intend to have uh, maintenance storage. So this will be railhead cleaning or track inspection, uh, wagons and trains, anything of that nature can park up in here. Well, the last part that comes off the middle road is the fuel depot, which has a couple of silos. It has an ingress point from road tankers, which can park up alongside and then be dispensed in. And it also has two major fueling points. The very bottom road just comes off, it pops through a coach cleaning uh, setup and then it comes into this little platform so you'd have better access to clean the inside of any coaches, any um, commuter trains, anything like that. Uh, they could be parked up there and you have access at platform or ground level or seating level 
Now this dark area represents tarmac, so this is where vehicles would come in to access the depot. Uh, these are some offices. There'll be some more office buildings in as well, with the access to the depot being to the left end of this tarmac area. So as you can see, I've been quite busy hoovering up all of the secondhand Code 75 points I could find locally on Facebook Marketplace and on eBay over the Christmas period. And this is everything I've managed to get hold of. So if you've been looking for them, I'm very sorry, I appear to have them all. Now there is a problem with some of these being secondhand, and that is they have been painted and weathered. And it's not so much a problem as much as just a little bit more work that I need to do, and that's your penance for having bought track slightly cheaper. As you can see on this one, this has been pretty well weathered over time and obviously has got very dirty when it's just been sat around in storage. So this whole piece needs cleaning, back. all of the rails need cleaning and I need to make sure that all of the joints on the back, all of these dropper wires are either in place and still work, like these ones, these still go down and will function nicely, but some of them probably don't. So I need to check over all of this before I lay a single piece and really clean them down. And if I'm doing some of them, I might as well clean them all up while I'm here. Get the soldering iron out, pull all the solder off, and generally take them back as stock as I possibly can. But before I do that, I'm gonna go through and make sure I have the minimum requirement to try and put this together. So that's all of the central points, um, not necessarily all of the flex track, but definitely all of the central points in here, make sure I have what I need. And then if I want, I can just clean those down for the time being, and I can do all the rest later when I'm sat watching TV. So with the AnyRail plan, I've marked on what size the various different turnouts are, and this is the three-way that is right at the very start. So let's take a look at this first turnout. It comes down into two small left-hand turnouts, like this followed by a medium left-hand turnout to make two parallel tracks coming back along this way. So that completes that side. If we move them off, you can look at this one. This is a medium left-hand turnout as well. This just comes in like that. So that gives us one, two, three, four tracks all coming out the back of here, which with that in will be track one, track two, track three, and track four. So that's the first section of track accounted for. So the middle section here is a curved right-hand point. So let's just pull that back in. It goes on that side, down from here into another small left-hand turnout, and that goes down into a curved left-hand turnout here. This one is a medium left hand which sits just about there and then the only other piece to add in is a y section onto this end now that should give us one two three four roads off this end which is one two three four roads and then the two down into the fueling depot that come off here are five and six and the last row that comes off this side is obviously dead straight, runs down, has no sidings, no points on. So that should be all of the points we actually need to make all of these sidings in this depot work. So this lot can actually get put to one side for the time being. It's quite a lot of extra track, I must admit, but I'm going to need a lot more on the rest of the layout, so I'm not too worried. So this should be all of the points that we need to build the depot. That is three small radius left-hand turnouts, three medium radius left-hand turnouts, uh, a left-hand curved and a right-hand curved turnout, a three-way Y and a two-way Y. And actually, I've got away pretty lightly because most of these are in pretty good condition. There's only a couple of them that have been weathered and a couple of them are going to need a really good clean down generally on the um, track tops, but they're all going to get weathered once they're in place anyway, so I'm not too bothered about the rest of it. It's, it, it's going to look fine. The main thing that I need to do is get rid of the excess solder and some of the old joints. You can see on this three-way Y, it's actually been soldered onto the side of the point rather than the bottom. So I'm going to change that and make sure that they're all disappearing down underneath. And then we can work out where the holes need to go and drill it through this board. So it's been a couple of days, there's been a lot of work done, and I've already deviated from my lovely worked out plan, so I'll need to go over some of those changes in a minute. But the big change, aside from moving the room around so I can sit on this side a little bit easier, is the board is now on its framework. Now this is 18mm ply, so it really didn't need a lot of framework underneath it at the best of times. 
It originally was meant to be 12 mil. They didn't have any in stock, so I ended up getting 18 mil, which is great, apart from it's 50% heavier because it's 50% thicker, and it's more expensive in the long run because all of the future boards are going to have to match this 18 mil ply and the same size framework, or I'm going to have to try and do some maths around it, and I'd rather just stick with the same stuff. So I've made a bit of a rod for my own back. But speaking of the framework, the framework underneath is made out of 4x1 timber. Now why is it 4 inches by an inch when 2x1 would have done, particularly 2x1 on underneath 18mm ply? Well, the reason for that is my motors. These are Tortoise slow throw motors and they are something like 90mm tall, including the, the board on the bottom. And because of where I have the board, it's on my dining room table, the lowest point has to be the bottom of the frame so it can sit on it and everything is suspended and it's not getting knocked. If this was only a two inch frame, which is all that's really needed, I would have to ha then lift the board up as well. And if I put it into storage anywhere, you've got things sticking out from the bottom, it, it could get knocked. This way, I could theoretically just screw a piece of thin ply into the bottom and it seals all of the electronics and everything else up on the inside. Do the same on the top and make a little lid and all of the track work is protected. So. As much as I've made a problem for myself down the line, right now it solves a bunch of problems that are much, much more pressing. So moving on to the track plan itself, originally I had four sidings across here and then another four sidings, two of which went into inspection pits, two of which were storage down this side. Now I've decided instead that I'm going to retain the four um, sidings on the back which go into the large shed as you can see they're all down here this one just needs to be glued down but these three are all affixed uh, in place properly and at the engine sh at the inspection sh uh, shed there's now only one siding along this side which just goes off the bottom of the the camera but this is the only siding here and I've shortened it down and then these two roads both go into inspection pits which I'm going to build and cut out it probably in the next episode now one of the reasons that I've done that is when I actually laid all the track out on the board it just seemed very cluttered it seemed very close in together and it it didn't really work as well as I'd thought I, there was a lot of other stuff that I can incorporate much better if I leave a little bit more room most notably, in this area down here, as it comes past along, along what will still be a concrete pad here, uh, I can have a concrete um, road, access road, that comes across this side in front of this shed and gives access directly across to here from this side of the depot. Um, it also means I can put some supporting buildings in the centre, some sort of small sheds or similar, the pointwork buildings, control buildings in this location, so it'll give a little bit more um, effect to the layout without just having track, 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 track and looking like a fiddle yard with a little bit of decor around it. Now the concrete pad itself is made mostly of foam core. This is plastic topped foam core material and I've cut this down to strips to fit between each piece of the, um, each of the cork underlay. Now I use cork only because it's quite slow speed and I don't think it's going to be a big problem with noise. If it was the high speed stuff I'd probably use some of the, the foam which will hopefully transmit much less noise down into the baseboard, make it a lot less echoey generally. The same reason I've gone for the tortoise motors instead of the cobalt ones because the cobalt ones are very very loud and I do value my peace of, peace of mind. So the plan for the concrete is going to be this foam core and then uh, some one millimetre card across the top and that will bring it up right to the top level. Got quite lucky there, thought I was going to have to stack a few different layers but actually this foam core plus the board is exactly the same height as the track and some three millimetre cork. So I definitely call that a win. It's being invaded by Loki. Um, <laughs> hopefully, he's, is he going to go? Yes, he's going to wander across. Hi Loki. Nope, nope, doesn't, doesn't want any fuss. Where was I? So we've got the concrete pad going down over here, I come across in front of the inspection pits area and go across into the main pad. So looking over at the fuel depot, the uh, Y piece for that and the cork haven't gone down yet just because I've been on this side reaching over is much more difficult so I've just got as far as this. I'm going to put all of these pieces of track down and I'll come back onto the fuel, uh, fuel depot later and actually show the process I've used for putting down all of this cork. Um, I've actually just been using fairly basic Hobbycraft PVA glue, it seems to be doing very well. A lot of this has just been trying to get used to soldering again um, and really making sure that what I've put, been putting down actually works, the wiring is right and 
sort of exercising a few practice runs before I try and tell everybody, yeah, this is definitely how I did it, rather than recording something that's completely wrong. That said, the track does seem to be running nicely. I take a lot of the springs out of the points. Um, so we'll see. Yep, there we go. That just runs on nicely through there. So it's actually running quite well. Um, and I'm very pleased with how it's come down. So I'm probably going to wrap that one up for the time being. Um, and I'll come back on to the next episode, laying down the rest of this track, um, fitting some point motors in the near future, um, and running through welding, uh, welding up, soldering up some of the wires onto the various bits of track that I've been laying down. And hopefully all of this stuff is actually going to work, and I'll have some power into the rest of it. Yes, Loki, I'll have some power into this at some point. But in the meantime, if you would like to sponsor any of the builds, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow. You can buy Pedalbox merch at shop.pedalbox.show. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel. We'll be releasing one of these videos probably each month, if not a little bit sooner, depending on how much uh, how much how far we get through this one, as well as lots and lots more car content as we get into the new year. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you'll join me next time when we might have a little bit more of a slower progress build on this rather than suddenly appearing with half a layout. high enough uh, so that a single piece of one mil um, heavy duty card can go across and will bring it right up to the top level of the tracks. This is built on three mil cork which goes underneath all of the track beds and under this point work. 